Hello, I'm Clint McDaniel. I'm an epidemiologist with the Molecular Epidemiology and Outbreak Investigations team in the Division of Tuberculosis Elimination at CDC. This presentation will introduce the Location and Time to Epidemiology algorithm, or LATTE. LATTE is a free analytic tool that can be used to analyze data on dates of stays and locations and dates of infectious periods to identify epidemiologic links during location-based contact investigations. When a patient with active TB disease is identified, public health officials will generally initiate a contact investigation to determine whether the patient had contact with other persons that might have resulted in TB transmission. Managing and analyzing data are often among the most challenging aspects of conducting a contact investigation. This is especially true for location-based contact investigations in which a patient names one or more locations where they spent time. Public health officials must then identify other persons who also spent time at these locations and determine whether, when, and for how long any of these persons overlapped with the patient in order to identify and prioritize contacts for follow-up. It is not uncommon for a patient to name multiple locations and for a location-based contact investigation to identify hundreds of potential contacts. Manually organizing and comparing large amounts of location and date data to identify overlaps and prioritize contacts of concern can be an extremely time-consuming, error-prone, and frustrating task. To facilitate this process, CDC created LATTE, the Location and Time to Epidemiology Algorithm. LATTE is a free analytic tool that can be used to analyze data on dates of stays in locations and dates of infectious periods to identify epidemiologic links during location-based contact investigations. LATTE can rapidly quantify the timing and duration of overlaps between persons at multiple locations including identifying overlaps that occurred during a patient's infectious period when TB transmission could have occurred. This information can help public health officials to quickly and reliably identify and prioritize contacts for follow-up. To use LATTE, investigators should have data on dates of stays and locations for patients and potential contacts. These data can be obtained from sources such as employee time cards at workplaces, enrollment rosters for school courses, client logs for homeless shelters, and inmate manifests for correctional facilities. This screenshot shows hypothetical data entered into a LATTE data upload template available from CDC and ready for a LATTE analysis. Each row includes the start and end date for a stay of a particular person at a particular location. A single LATTE analysis can include data for multiple stays by multiple persons at multiple locations. To identify overlaps that occurred when patients were infectious, investigators should also have data on estimated dates of infectious periods. These dates can be estimated using information such as symptom onset dates, treatment start dates, and isolation start dates. Again, this screenshot shows hypothetical data entered into a LATTE data upload template available from CDC and ready for a LATTE analysis. A LATTE analysis can be performed using this simple online user interface. Users can quickly upload one of two data files, specify a handful of analysis settings, and then hit the Run button. A LATTE analysis typically takes less than a minute to complete. Among the various outputs of a LATTE analysis are Gantt charts, which provide visualizations of dates of stays and locations and estimated dates of infectious periods. Dates are listed across columns, and persons are listed on the left-hand side of the chart. Cells shaded black and gray indicate dates of stays and locations, and cells shaded red indicate estimated dates of infectious periods of patients. By scanning down columns, overlaps of one or more persons at a location, and overlap that occurred during the estimated infectious period of one or more patients can be quickly identified. Another output of a LATTE analysis is the summary by person output file. For each person included in the analysis, this file reports the total number of days of overlap with other persons and the total number of days of overlap with patients during their infectious periods, if infectious period data were available. This information can inform cluster and contact investigations in multiple ways. 
Among the contacts, contact two had a relatively high number of days of overlap with one or more patients during their infectious periods. Because of this exposure, contact two could be prioritized for follow-up. In contrast, contact three had no days of overlap with a patient during their infectious period. Because of this lack of exposure, contact three is lower risk of having been infected at homeless shelter A and could represent a low priority for follow-up. By sorting the data based on values in column F, a list of persons ordered according to their priority for follow-up can easily be generated. In summary, LATTE was designed to identify overlaps in space and time between cases or between cases and contacts. It can be used for any congregate setting investigation with one or more locations. It is important to keep in mind the need to collect and clean the data being used in LATTE. Users should always consider the accuracy and completeness of the data inputs, as this can impact the results. We recommend users update the data inputs and rerun LATTE as new information becomes available. This will ensure the most accurate results and conclusions are achieved in your investigation. Finally, because LATTE is an algorithm that is hosted on CDC servers, users should not enter any personally identifiable information into the templates. Should you want to use identifiable information with LATTE, we're happy to show you how to run the code in RStudio on your local computer. Additional information on how to access and use LATTE can be obtained at the URLs shown here. Supporting material available for download include a user's manual, training presentation, input file templates, and training data sets that can be used to practice running LATTE. The LATTE R source code is also available online. Interested users can send an email to tbgenotyping at cdc.gov with questions or to initiate credentialing for access to the online user interface. We would like to thank the CDC Office of Advanced Molecular Detection for their support in developing the LATTE algorithm.